All right, welcome to the rest of my life. I'm Lance Ash, and I'm heading to work, heading back to work after a 10 day vacation. Oh my goodness, I do not want to go back. Okay. Before I give you a rundown of the events of the vacation, let me ease out onto the road here. Oh my God, oh God. Okay now, my belly's sloshing around. Basically four cups of tea. All right, we're gonna go through the CDs in my bag. Let's see what we got here. First, Grand Funk Railroad, good singing, good playing. This is the last official, this is the last real um, Grand Funk album. It was sort of a last ditch effort to save the band. Um, they got Frank Zappa to produce it. He thought the record was so good that he thought it was a shame they broke up right afterwards. All right, next. Uh, this is a band called The Nava. They're a sort of a prog metal band. I don't know the name of their album. But they have a song on here that's a total rip of Achilles' Last Stand. Oh, God. It's hard for me to drive. Belly's so full. All right, next. Oh, Sly and Robbie. The famous uh, Jamaican reggae um, rhythm section. This is their album Friends, where they got a different vocalist on every every track. What's next? Ah, Tom Petty, Let Me Up, I've Had Enough. I remember shoplifting the cassette of this at a... Uh, what would you call it? A, a discount retailer? Called Zayers. They're out of business now. Oh, goodness, hold on a second. All right, next. Hold on. I'm trying to drive with my knee. Uh, Tom Petty, uh, Southern Accents. I think, I'm, I think I'm listening to a lot of Tom Petty lately because uh, I'm getting back into songwriting. And he's such a perfect songwriter. Okay, what's next here? Okay, this is something I got this weekend. Um, various libraries in the area sell books, DVDs, CDs, LPs sometimes that they don't want. Stuff that's been donated and they have no use for. And um, the Danielsville Library is a nice, it's a really nice library for being out in, in Hicktown. And um, they have lots of stuff for sale. And um, this is called Themes from Classic Science Fiction, Fantasy, and Horror Films. And um, I got it just for the hell of it. When I got, got in the car and looked at it, I was surprised to see that the record label is Verez Sarabande, which is a big classical label in, um, I guess, France. And uh, from what I've heard so far, it's pretty good. Next, the original soundtrack from Star Trek The Motion Picture, 1979. And um, this is also something I got at the Danielsville Library. <laughs> And I put it in as soon as we got in the car to leave, and I had no idea that the uh, the main theme is the same as the Star Trek Next Generation theme. I thought that was totally when I thought when Next Generation came out, that was a totally new theme that they'd come up with. I don't know what I was thinking. It's a long time ago. All right, next, uh, Blue and Lonesome, the last our most recent Rolling Stones album. Oh goodness, what's next? Ah, Rolling Stones Flashpoint. This is the, the live album from the 89-90 tour. Uh, what's next? Ah, Freddie Hubbard, Red Clay. The only reason I brought this is because it has a version of John Lennon's song Cold Turkey on here. 
And I didn't, I mean, I've had this record for years and either didn't know or forgot that that was on here, that that was what that was. And that should be it. Yeah, that's it. All right, now, um, got to go over the events of the week. Oh, Lord. Um, for me, it was a very productive week. I finished a painting, the painting I'd been working on for several weeks, and started another one and amazingly finished it last night. So I finished two paintings this, this, this last week. Um, did, I finished reading a very mediocre German um, crime novel. I just thought it was crap. I, I think I'm going to try, try reading science fiction in German from now on rather than murder mysteries. I can't seem to find what I want. I ordered from Amazon a used copy of a German translation of Ringworld by Larry Niven. Don't know when it's going to get here. Um, made a major breakthrough with my drawing of comics for the online magazine. Long time ago, long time ago, when I was using the uh, nom de plume Toadskabo to sign all my works, I had a different blog under that name, and I had an online comic strip called Doodle Nose. And it, I just, with that comic strip, I got into a groove, and I was just turning the stuff out every day and it was it, I became like a machine and it was such a good feeling and when I ended that 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 strip I really felt a sense of loss and I was cut adrift for a long time and when I started doing this project I had forgotten what the exact methodology was for doing the old one and um, I th I've tried this and that and I think that's one of the reasons that a lot of the stuff I've been doing for uh, the online magazine has been so boring um, but anyway so I've been working my way towards rediscovering how I did the old strip and I think I've got it and it, it just felt so good when it clicked this week so I did a couple of drawings a couple of pages for that did a couple of random drawings um, just as far as producing stuff it was a good week oh now what I did this week my wife and I took two trips up to quote unquote Atlanta. People who actually live in Atlanta, they distinguish between Atlanta proper, which is downtown, and all of the little uh, units that make up the metropolitan area, like Norcross, Roswell, Alpharetta, Marietta, so on and so forth. To us barbarians, it's all Atlanta, okay? Um, anyway, so one day we took a trip up to, uh, the main goal of that trip was the Beaufort Highway Farmer's Market, which was, a, was started off awkward because it was raining and um, I was driving, my wife hates my driving, but we got over that part, a little irritation with each other and it turned out to be a good day. Um, walking around, for someone who lives out in the middle of nowhere, going to a place like the Beaufort Highway Farmer's Market is like taking a trip to a European market because there's products from all over the world, you know, chocolate from Turkey, uh, licorice from uh, Denmark, 
um, cheeses from around the world, noodles from Vietnam, uh, red pepper paste from Korea. It, it was great. Um, can't think what else we did on that trip. We did, took some side trips to some other places. Can't remember. Anyway, then two days later, drove back up to a Atlanta to go to, to go to the DeKalb Farmer's Market, which is also an interesting experience. They don't have as many, or hardly any, um, packaged goods from around the world, but what they do have is an amazing bakery, and they have a much greater emphasis on produce. Um, and a lot of stuff you just don't see. Weird roots, fruits, um, weird leaves, <laughs> you know. Um, um, and another thing, we, this we, this didn't happen so much, maybe because we did. We, it was during the week and we had just gotten there, got there right when it opened. But one of the really great things about going to the, the cab farmers market is to look at the people because you see people that are clearly from the Middle East from India uh, from Europe um, North Africa it's really interesting to see all these different people um, I'm trying to think They have a big meat market there too. We don't eat meat, um, but th this place, they sell goat testicles for consumption. Yeah, it's that, you know, kind of place. Um, maybe one time, long time ago, they had Winsleydale, which is a famous uh, cheese from England. It's like, it tastes like cottage cheese, but it's not a soft cheese. It's a cheese for slicing. It's got that, this flat, neutral taste. It's very good with crackers. Um, on that trip, oh yeah, the, the trip to do the DeKalb Farmer's Market, we also went to our favorite Indian restaurant, favorite Indian, I mean, favorite restaurant, period. It's an Indian vegetarian restaurant in Decatur called Madras Mantra. We haven't, we haven't been in two years because of the pandemic. They didn't have, they didn't have the buffet, so there was no reason to go. But we called ahead. Yes, the buffet is back up and running and Found out what time they opened. We went and it was fabulous. Everything was great. And it seems to me that as I've gotten older, my ability to eat mass quantities has diminished. Because I remember being a kid and eating two or three plates at a buffet. And so you go with the expectation that you're gonna eat two or three plates. You're gonna get your money's worth. I ate one plate and I was already full, but I, I felt compelled to go back for another because I wanted to get my money's worth. Oh my God, F fantastic. The palak paneer was unlike, it was good, but it was unlike any I've had before. Palak paneer is, used, is, is basically, it's spinach and a kind of Indian cheese called paneer, which is little cubes, and it's very similar in appearance and mouth feel to tofu. But it's a cheese, and they cook it together in this sauce, and usually palak paneer has a green color because of the spinach, but this had more of a, a creamy pale orange, and it was more of a, they had some sort of, um, it, was, it was creamier. Um, and it was a, a softer taste. It was still really, really good. Oh, by the way, we're going to have to stop in a second to get a lottery ticket. The lottery's up to like $800 million now, so there's no way that I can forego that. Oh, good. We got some ones in here. I hate breaking a 20, especially at the convenience store. All right. 
I always say all right, like my cousin Robin. Oh, every time I say it, I think of her. I wonder where she's at now. She and her sister were so funny together. They were so clever and funny. Biting wit. Oh my goodness. It's really hard for me to turn. My stomach hurts. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Hold on. All right, park, power, seat belt. Oh Christ. Let me get a towel and cover up my junk so nobody breaks in while I'm gone. Hold on. Oh shit. God, it's hot out here. It must be 100 degrees. I tried to cut the grass this weekend, but I only got maybe a third of it done. Hey, I need to get a quick pick on the Mega Millions. Yep. Alright, thanks. Alright, thank you. Oh dear, oh dear, dear, dear. Well, that was easy, nobody was in there. Strange. Uh, uh, two women sitting beside me look like they're from Lebanon or something. I don't know, not Lebanon, but uh, hold on, I'm gonna put this recorder down for a second. Which, okay, there we go. All right, when I get a, a lottery ticket, I usually put it into the case of one of the CDs I'm listening to, and which one I choose to put it into affects the luck. So this time I put it in the, in the Rolling Stones live record case. Oh. Maybe Mick and Keith and Ron will bring me luck. Alright. God damn, I didn't sit that motorcycle. Oh dear. Alright, here we go. Um, Alright, on with what I was saying. What else did I get done this week? We've let the yard, we've let the grass go so long cutting that little bit that I did was a pain in the ass. I had to go over it twice. And I meant to finish the rest of it, but it rained almost every day this week. And, um, hmm. I'm trying to think what else happened. We've been watching a lot of um, the old Inspector Morse the original episodes and you know John Thaw is a great actor Kevin Watley is a great actor and um, the character's good but to be honest that show is just not as good as it's not as good as you remember it's not as good as it could have been or should have been especially compared to the the, the prequel show Endeavor I think the show got better as it went along, um, but it suffers from what a lot of British television suffers from, which is this focus on drama, a lot of um, drama between characters of the upper classes class is such a big deal in Britain. It's very soap opera, soap opera feely. Um, and um, anyway, Endeavor was just such a 
well written show and you know modern day shows modern day television shows with the emphasis on a story arc that carries over an entire se season or series as they call it in the UK is just such a higher level of writing because the individual episode is important but then you've got to watch the episodes together to see how the characters develop over time and that's so rare in older television started watching the new Star Trek show, the one with Captain Pike. Um, I can't get involved in that. She said it was just fantastic, but I can't get, get involved in another television show. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. It'll be something we can share as husband and wife. went out to lunch with my sister and father. My, it's the first time my father has seen my sister and me in the same place at the same time in years. We went to a Thai restaurant near where he lives and I've been there I think twice before. It's good, but for what you get it's too expensive. The lunch entrees start at $11. And I know that around the country and around the world, people go, oh, that's not so bad. Here, it's pretty bad for lunch, especially for what you get. Well, get over then, Jack. Subaru's trying to get in front of me. I just decided not to. Anyway, uh, so the three of us had lunch together. Um, and then afterwards, we drove over to where my dad is building his new house. And um, it's pretty small. And half of the entire uh, structure is taken up with a garage big enough to house his four vehicles. He had a really nice three-story townhouse, but he gave it up because he said, as he's getting older, the stairs are just too much to um, deal with. And I mean, I understand that, but still, that place was so nice. Shit. I'd love to live somewhere like that. I'd love for my kids to live somewhere like that. Only three weeks to go until my daughter moves out to her new apartment. I know that she will be glad to be done with us. Oh, goodness. Oh, when we went to the Daniels Hall Library, uh, my, my daughter's a huge Doctor Who fan. I was a big fan, but she's twice the fan that I ever was. Anyway, we found, uh, I think it was 40 Doctor Who paperbacks. Um, I think they were 50 cents each. Maybe less than that, I don't know, but we got all of them for her. Got some DVDs too at that library, 50 cents each. Should have got more probably, but I, I, I just don't have time for movies. We got stuff that my, my son would like. We got, um, I can't remember what we got for him. I think we got a Schwarzenegger movie. All right, we're, we're approaching the end of the episode. Um, I didn't have time this week to come up with actual topics. I thought that uh, a recount of the week's activities would be uh, uh, sufficient. So this coming week, I will think of some interesting topics and uh, anecdotes from my exciting past to tell you. So for now, that's it. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye.